And welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're talking about El Nino and La Nina, something we talk about on TV but don't really get to dive deep into. And we got an expert on the subject with us today, Dr. Emily Becker, who is uh, working for the University of Miami and also writes a blog for climate.gov. So Dr. Becker, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. Now, to get right to the point, again, something people have heard the term of, but they don't know a lot exactly what it is. What exactly is El Nino and La Nina? Sure. Um, most people have heard of El Nino, maybe from uh, Chris Farley's Saturday Night Live skit. Uh, it is not, in fact, a storm. It's a global pattern, global weather pattern that is induced by uh, changes in the temperature of the surface of the Pacific Ocean. So the central Pacific, central tropical Pacific Ocean gets a little warmer than normal, that's El Nino, a little cooler than normal, that's La Nina, and that has the power to change global weather patterns. So you, how, how exactly did it come up with the name El Nino and La Nina when it comes to cold mm -hmm. and hot water? Yeah, the uh, El Nino was first observed by Peruvian fishermen uh, in the 19th century, in fact. Uh, so they have been aware of this for quite a long time uh, because it affects the fisheries off the coasts of Peru. And so Spanish speaking country and it, El Nino usually peaks around uh, Christmas time. So they called it El Nino, the boy, uh, boy child, um, somewhat in reference to Christmas time. All right, and so you were talking about having big impacts uh, all over the world. Why is it so important for us to study and to learn about El Nino uh, when it comes to forecasting the weather all across the globe? One of the really exciting things about El Nino is it can be predicted uh, sometimes a year or more in advance. Uh, it can be predicted with a lot of confidence six months in advance. So if you think about how difficult it is to predict anything six months in advance, um, getting an early picture on that, uh, on the potential weather changes in the winter only in June is a, a pretty exciting opportunity. So we have El Nino with the warm water and La Nina with the cold water. So that mm -hmm. oscillation, is there a pattern that it goes through when you are trying to forecast it? Uh, yes, it's um, the pattern itself is not very reliable. It, we say it recurs on a two to seven year uh, period. So approximately two to seven years. So that's not very regular. Um, and usually you'll get alternating El Nino and La Nina with potentially a neutral year, which is neither El Nino or La Nina uh, in between. But sometimes, as we have currently, you'll have three years of La Nina in a row. So um, it's not, uh, it, it's somewhat periodic, but not very reliably. So when we're talking about waters near the equator off in the Pacific, how can warmer, colder waters in that part of the globe impact and influence the weather in other areas. Yeah, it's sort of crazy, isn't it? Uh, it's thousands of miles away, and yet it increases uh, our predictability of our weather patterns here in the U.S. Uh, in fact, the uh, when you get that warmer, I'll start with El Nino, when you get that warmer than average water in the Pacific, you get a lot more storms forming in the middle of the Pacific than usual. And those storms actually have the power to send so much air and moisture up into the atmosphere um, that can travel around the world and change the location of the jet stream. And uh, many of your listeners have probably heard of the jet stream. It's a, a river of air in the mid latitudes that carries storms around the world. And so when you change the position of the jet stream, you change where the storms go and where the warmer and cooler temperatures go. So we're, we're learning a lot about uh, El Nino and La Nina. What kind of research is going on now to continue to learn about forecasting it and the impacts it has? So much, it's, it's been a really active area of research uh, for 50 years now but we're still uh, still learning about this huge pattern. Uh, and some of the things we're looking at are how will El Nino itself, so the, the water changes in the Pacific, and how will its impact, so it's uh, how it affects weather, how will those change with global warming? That's a really important question. 
Uh, and then we're always looking at how how those impacts, you know, can we understand them better? How that change in the Pacific translates into uh, the weather weather changes in the mid latitudes and elsewhere around the world. So we've been in a La Nina pattern here the last couple of winters. What's the latest forecast for La Nina for this winter and moving ahead? Right, so our third La Nina winter in a row, we're right in the middle of it now, and the current forecast is for La Nina to dwindle and turn to neutral uh, conditions by the spring of this year. And then looking out farther, uh, we don't have a very strong forecast for next fall, but uh, chances of El Nino or neutral are much stronger than chances for La Nina for next year. So it's very unlikely that we will have four La Ninas in a row, which would be a good change. <laughs> yeah, so um, when we talk about the impacts that are felt, is this more where it affects the wintertime months or the changes in the summertime months of our weather? Definitely changes the winter time a lot more. Um, the, the jet stream is more dominant in the winter hemisphere. So for us, that's you know, December, January, February timeframe. Um, so those direct impacts are felt in the winter. But um, if I can jump ahead a little bit, there's um, there are downstream impacts that like if you reduce the, say La Nina leads to drier winters in Texas, which it does, a drier winter can actually result in a warmer summer. So you have these follow on impacts that are, uh, you know, related to the direct ones, but come later in the year. So yeah, we, we just dealt with kind of that setup here. Yeah, a drier mm -hmm. winter and then yeah, we've had the bad drought that's yeah. moved through the state of Texas. So let's look back the last two La Nina. So we're here in central Texas and the last two Februarys we've had unseasonally large winter storms that have rolled through the state of Texas. Is that is La Nina to blame for those systems blowing through? Well, it's uh, as with anything, it's really difficult to attribute one single event to something larger like El Nino or La Nina. Um, uh, but because there's so much variability in the weather, you're, you're guaranteed to get uh, something that doesn't fit with the overall pattern. So La Nina generally leads to drier winters in Texas. So those storms don't necessarily uh, line up with your typical La Nina impacts. But um, like I said, the weather is crazy. <laughs> so we see all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those, yeah, it all depends on your perspective of how you, you know, that's why I tell folks when you average it all out, it's gonna be warmer and drier, but you exactly. get the, it seems like it has more mm -hmm. crazy spikes a lot of times during those La Nina winters. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I came across your research and your info on climate.gov. Why don't you let folks know about uh, the blog that y'all have there? And it's really amazing. I mean, whether you're into science a lot or know a bunch or not, you can really read mm -hmm. and learn a lot on your blog. Oh, thank you so much. We uh, we started writing the blog about eight or nine years ago, and we thought we would run out of things to say, but here we are uh, nine years later with just so much to say. Um, we've, uh, we've really had a great time communicating in a more uh, casual and accessible way. And climate.gov in general is a tremendous source for any educators who are looking for materials uh, to teach uh, any grades or um, or just interested people to learn more about the weather and climate overall. Awesome. Well, Dr. Becker, I tell you, I, like I said, I, I've studied La Nina and El Nino through college, but like I said, we don't get a lot of time to talk about it on air. And it's mm -hmm. funny how people will think it's something, like you said, the Chris Farley skit. I think that's the first thing everybody knows. Uh, but I appreciate you taking time to talk with us and educating us a little more. And I think we're all looking forward for that shift to get out of La Nina for a little while as well. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Awesome. Maybe break the drought. So. Yes, very much. Well, thank you for your time okay. and taking some time to visit with us. Okay, thanks so much for the opportunity.